Three things landlords need to know before they hire subcontractors. And in fact, your life might depend on it, or at least your checkbook. Check it out in this video. Hi everyone, Paul Vicheski, NebraskaLandlord.com. This is video or part two of a video series, a three-part video series entitled Landlords and What They Need to Know When Hiring Subcontractors. Now in the first video, we discussed the Nebraska Department of Labor's auditing of our industry. They're actively out and they're doing audits. If you haven't seen that one, it's part one of three. And so I'd check that out before you move on here to this video. Part two, which is this video, we're going to be discussing 1099s and W9s and what landlords need to know and what's going on currently in the community. But before you do that, once again, I'm, I'm asking that please, uh, in the right hand side of your screen, there's a little red button. It's a subscribe button. I would ask that you click on that and then move up here to the top right hand corner of your of your screen. There's a little bell click on that what that does is that'll notify you every time I upload a new video to this channel why this is important is trying to get up to a thousand subscribers when that happens it really opens up a whole toolbox of enhanced features for me to be able to produce these videos and and basically give these videos to you for free so I would really appreciate if you would take a few seconds and do that part one of three we discussed uh, what landlords need to know about subcontractors and whether or not you're checking your subcontractors against the Department of Labor list. In this video, number two, we're going to be discussing what you really need to know about W-9s and 1099s when you're dealing with subcontractors. Right now, a lot of people think that uh, if you hire a subcontractor to come in and do some work for you, whether they're repairing your deck, painting your, your rental property, or just cleaning, you know what, they're a subcontractor, it's Joe's cleaning service, I'm just going to cut them a check and that's it. And if it's under $600, I don't have to do anything, right? Well, it's really not the case. What's happening out there is the IRS auditors are out there and they are actively auditing landlords and property manager files. And, and there's some things that we're starting to get out of that as far as data. You have to understand that whether you're hiring somebody to do five dollars worth of work or fifty thousand dollars worth of work you really need to get a w9 it's an irs form it's real easy just go to google type in w9 it's real easy to fill out but they really that contractor needs to fill that out because they're going to make an election of how they are operating their business are they a sole proprietor are they an s corporation are they an llc because if they're an F s corporation you don't have to give them a 1099 no matter the amount that you pay them. If they're a sole proprietor or even an LLC, if they're just an LLC like a single member and they're not, not operating as a S corporation, you really need to send them a 1099 at the end of the year. But what happens is the W-9 is your proof to that IRS auditor that I didn't issue a 1099 to this contractor because they made an affirmation on the W-9 that they're an S corporation or they're an LLC. All right. If they're a, a sole proprietor, then, you know, Joe's cleaning service or Joe's deck service, they need to be able to uh, you need to be able to issue them a 1099. I would tell you from a risk management point of view. All right. This is to be ultra safe here. And this is what I do. I don't care if I paid them five bucks. $500 or $50,000. I let them know right up front they are going to get a 1099 at the end of the year. If they don't want to fill out the W-9 or they don't want to or they don't agree that hey don't send me anything they just want cash they don't want to be held accountable to the money that I pay I won't hire them to do the work I don't care that's just from a very strict risk management point of view. And last but not least, and I'm sure if you contact your CPA about this, the IRS, they're big sticklers on these 1099s. And the reason I wanted to include this video in this series here is because I have heard from several CPAs in the last six months, and this is what they're seeing from the auditors. They're being sticklers with this. So that's all I got in this video. Next week, I'll put our third and final part to this video series, and that's going to be dealing with your requirement as a landlord or a property manager uh, to report your subcontractors to the new hire system. So before you turn this off, once again, please subscribe and hit the little bell. I appreciate it. Until next time, happy land.